Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum size subarray sum. We're given an array of positive integers and that's actually going to be an important detail, the fact that they're all positive. And we're also given a target value and all we want to do is return the minimum length of a contiguous subarray. Uh, basically, think of a contiguous subarray as like a window within our array. So, for example, this is our array. You know, we want some window in this array. And we want the sum of all the values in that window to be greater than or equal than the target value. Now there could be multiple windows like this, but remember we want to return the one that has the minimum length. And specifically we're going to return the length of that window. So in this case, uh, our target value is seven. So is there any window here that sums up to seven? Well, there's many, right? Like the whole array itself could be, but the shortest one in terms of length is this one, four and three, because they sum up to seven and the length of that window is two. Looking at the second example, you know, this could be considered a window, but there's a shorter one, you know, the value for itself. It could be this one or it could be this one. There's a multiple in this case, but the length of each of them is one, so we can return one as the result. So let's immediately jump into the brute force solution because it's not too difficult to come up with. I mean, we could try every possible subarray or every possible window in other words, right? And we could do that with nested for loops. What I mean is uh, we look at every single window starting at two, right? This is the first window, uh, then the, the next window is the first two values, then this, then this, and then basically keep going, right? And technically we don't have to actually go through the entire array because we're gonna stop the first time that we find a window that sums up to the target value. In this case, I think it's this one because this sums up to, I think these three are six plus two, that's gonna be eight. So this is one window, the size of it is four. So that's the shortest window starting at two that will uh, sum up to the target. But there could be even shorter windows that maybe start at three. So then we try every window starting at three, et cetera, et cetera. We do that for every value in this entire array. That's how we're gonna use the nested for loops. Now the time complexity of that is going to be big O of n squared where n is the size of the input array. So the question is, can we do better? Yes, we can do better and we can actually use this brute force uh, solution to figure out how we can do better because there is some repeated work that we're doing here which might not be immediately obvious. Let's uh, first you know, go through starting at two. Uh, right now our sum is two, uh, now we include the three, now our sum is five, now our sum is six, we're still under the target, we include one last value, uh, two, now our sum is eight. So by doing this, we found out that the shortest window that can sum up to the target starting at the two is of length four right, four values. And of course, we, you know, we could add more values to the window now, but those are just gonna make the window longer. So there's no point in doing that. So then next, what we're gonna do is then start at the three and then you know do the work that we were just doing, right? In, in other words, we're gonna uh, then include the one, then include the two, but didn't we kind of already do that work with the first pass? So why should we repeat it now? And this is where it comes into play. The values in the array are going to be positive. What does that mean for us? Because if there were negatives, that would complicate things. But since it's positive, we know for sure one important thing. And that important thing is, it wasn't until we included this value that our first window uh, was greater than or equal to the target, right? That's pretty obvious. So then my question to you is, is it ever going to be possible that starting from this three, we find a window before the last value uh, of the previous window, right, that green window, uh, is it going to be possible that we find a window like this that's also going to be greater than or equal to the target? No way, because we know all these values are positive. This value is positive. Now that we're starting at three, we're not including this value anymore. And we know for sure that until we reached this two, when we just had these three values, we definitely were not greater than or equal to the target. So how is it gonna be possible that with just these values, we're gonna be greater than or equal to the target? It's not possible. So what I'm saying is we don't have to uh, even, we don't have to consider this window. We're never gonna find a window this short starting at three. We can just include the entire window except for that first value that we were doing. And if you're starting to see what we're doing here, this is a very common technique 
called the sliding window. We're gonna maintain two pointers and shift those pointers accordingly as we find a valid window. So let's run through this algorithm. It's going to actually be pretty simple. It's very uh, standard sliding window. Okay, I'll run through it quickly. We started at the two. Uh, we're gonna take, uh, this is our left pointer, by the way, so let's actually call it left. And then our right pointer is initially gonna be here too. We're gonna maintain what the total is so far. So right now we're at two and, and we're gonna keep uh, increasing our window. So now our total is actually gonna be five, but five is still less than seven. So we're gonna shift our right pointer again. So now our total is gonna be six. Uh, that's also less than the target. We're gonna shift again. Now our total is gonna be eight. Now the question is, this might be our result. Well, what's the size of the window? Right now it's four. So I'm not gonna write it down, but let's just keep track mentally of what the shortest window that we find. And once we find a valid window like this one, uh, we know that we can just chop off the left value. There's no point in repeating the work just because now we're gonna start at three. We don't have to recompute all this. Let's just shift our left pointer. So I'm gonna do that like this. And since we got rid of this two, our total is actually gonna be decremented by two. So instead of eight, we're gonna be now at a six. Our right pointer is gonna be here, but now we're going to start shifting our right pointer because our total is less than the target. So uh, we're going to shift the right pointer one more time to here. So now our total is gonna be 10. We're gonna add this four that we just uh, got. So now our total is 10. It's greater than or equal to the target, but this window is also of size four. So it's not any shorter than the previous one. But now we're going to uh, shift our left pointer. It was over here. Now we're gonna shift it to this position. So left is here, our right pointer is still here, but we have to decrement the three from our total. Uh, our total was 10, uh, now it's going to be seven. Um, but our window this time is uh, valid, right? Seven is greater than or equal to the target. Uh, and our window is a little bit shorter this time. It's of size three. Uh, since our window is valid, we're gonna take the left pointer and then shift it. So it's now gonna be over here. Our window now, it, our target was seven. Now we're gonna decrement it by one. So our, tar our total is gonna be six now. That's less than the target. So let's start uh, incrementing our right pointer. So now our right pointer is going to be over here and our window is once again, uh, now it's we're adding the three. So now our total is nine, so it's valid. The size of it is three, of course. That's greater than the target. Three is what we already previously had, uh, but now we're gonna shift our left pointer because the window is valid. And now the left pointer is gonna be over here. Is the window still valid? Yes, it is, right? Because we decremented the total by two. So now uh, it went from being nine to now being seven. Seven is still uh, greater than or equal to the target. So now our window is of size two. And one thing I didn't actually mention in any of the previous cases is while our window is still valid, we're going to be uh, incrementing the left pointer because there's no need to shift the right pointer and add elements if our window is currently valid, right? That's when we want to be shrinking the windows. It could be possible that multiple consecutive times, we end up shifting the left pointer. In this case, we are gonna shift the left pointer. It's going to uh, be here now, left and right are at three, but now our window is no longer valid. Of course, we're gonna take the right pointer and then shift it, but now it's gonna be out of bounds. So that's how you know we can stop. And uh, you know we basically found all of the windows that we possibly could, and the shortest one was this one of size two. So two is going to be what we return. That's exactly what was expected in this example problem. If you noticed, well, we do have two pointers, so in a sense, we're gonna be scanning through the array two times, uh, but that's still big O of N time complexity. There's really no extra memory complexity. We don't have any data structures, just a couple of pointers. So the memory complexity is big O of one. With that said, we can jump into the code now. So now let's code it up. We have our left pointer and our total which are two uh, variables we're gonna be keeping track of. So our left pointer, of course, initially is gonna be at the beginning, our total uh, sum is what the total represents is also initially gonna be zero. The reason we don't have a right pointer is because we're actually just going to uh, be incrementing our a right pointer each time uh, using a for loop. We could have done it differently, but I feel like it's a little bit easier to do it this way. So our right pointer is just gonna iterate through every position in the input array. Now our result is what's going to be that minimum length that we're trying to return. Initially, we can set it to, you know, multi we could set it to a default value of infinity, which is what I'm gonna do in this case, because one detail that they mention is if we don't find an array that sums up to the target, then we can return a default value of zero. So what I'm going to say is return zero if uh, result is equal to the initial infinity value. Uh, and if it's not equal to infinity, then we can actually return the real result, which we calculated in that variable. If you don't have an infinity uh, in your language or whatever, you could also set it to the length of the input array plus one. 
because that's also technically an invalid value and that's also a large value. You could set it to negative one as well if you want, but uh, the reason I'm setting it to a big value is because remember we're trying to minimize it, so we're gonna be using like the min function uh, within this for loop. Okay, but now for the actual sliding window portion. Remember, each time we add a new value at the right pointer, we're going to be taking that value and adding it to our total, right? That's the first and very basic step. So let's add that value at uh, index right to our total. But also remember that if the total becomes greater than or equal to the target, well, one, the first thing uh, to do then is potentially we have found our result but our result is going to be the size of the window. How do we get the size of the window? We can take the right pointer minus the left pointer uh, plus one, which is going to give us the size of the window. Uh, and remember, we're trying to minimize the result. So we're gonna set the result equal to the minimum of that uh, computation, right? The size of the current window, as well as the minimum of the result itself. So of course, if the result is infinity, then you know this will become the new result. But if the result is already a smaller value than this window, then the result is gonna stay the same. Okay, that's the first step, but also remember we want to increment our left pointer by one now, because if the window is already greater than or equal to the target, let's try to find a smaller window. But remember, if this condition holds multiple times, multiple consecutive times, then we want to continue incrementing the left pointer as well as potentially you know, figuring out if we've found the result. So instead of having this be an if statement, let's make it a while loop. Now, just because we have a while loop inside of a for loop does not mean the time complexity is n squared. Think about how many times this loop is going to execute in total. In the worst case, the left pointer will be incremented until it's out of bounds of the nums array. Now, we don't need to you know, confirm that because if that was the case, then of course our total would be zero and we know that the target is always gonna be a positive number, so then the loop would exit by itself anyway. Uh, there's one thing that I actually forgot with this loop. Before we actually increment the left pointer, we also want to subtract the value at the left pointer from our total, right? Because our total represents the values in our current window. If we're updating our window, then we also have to update the total value. And that is actually the entire code, as long as I didn't make any mistakes so let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.